Hey everybody, PJ Riley from Lancaster Archery with another episode of our Tech Talk, and we're here with Josh Sidebottom from TOG, the COO and Chief Engineer. He's in there working with all these new bows. Josh, thanks for being here, first off. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, we wanted to jump right into it, Elite coming out with a carbon bow. Before we get into some of the details about it, why did you guys decide to take that on? You know, it's a it's a segment of our our market that we obviously weren't participating in, and we want to try to um, bring products that people are asking for, and that um, you know people want to get into an elite bow, but the they like the features and benefits of a carbon bow. So uh, it was a project that we decided to take on really a, a few years ago. It's been in the works for, for some time now. Oh, okay. For, from the engineering side, what are the differences for you on the back end working with aluminum versus carbon? Yeah, there's there's significant differences. In, and obviously of, of the way the risers manufactured, um, but really probably the most significant difference from a design standpoint is with aluminum, it's a uniform material throughout. So, you know, predicting the stability and stresses and everything is, is pretty easy to do because it's a uniform material. Um, the way carbon risers are built with uh, the different types of carbon that you can use, the thickness of carbon, um, how it's laid up and how it's, how it's pressed can all impact the performance of the bow. So uh, there, there's a definitely a learning curve on discovering um, where you need to add certain types of carbon, whether it's a, a different strength or a different uh, unidirectional carbon or a weave. Um, it, it's a it's a totally different process in creating the geometry. Right. And now we hear uh, about hand laid carbon. I don't really know. Yeah totally understand that other than I know it means these things are like they put the carbon into like a mold is yep. my term. Yeah. So, um, and that's really where you can get into, um, you know, hand laying in a different grade of carbon in a certain area where you need more strength. Gotcha. Um, but really, yeah, you have a, a form that you, you know, pieces of carbon are cut uh, and laid into a form which is then molded into the uniform structure of the, of the riser. Yeah. So I, I'll tell you, I, I got to shoot the era, um, spend some time with it. And what, I guess what impressed me, Paul Gio came down and had a bunch of us shoot it and just, there just wasn't the carbon hand shock that I'm yeah. used to with carbon bows. It, what surprised me was it shot like an elite, but it was carbon. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. know why, but I just wasn't expecting that. <laughs> and that was, that was really a goal of this project from the beginning is to, you know, we have customers that love elite bows yeah. um, and we wanted them to have that same experience with a carbon elite bow. Um, so from the aesthetics of the riser all the way to the feel, um, it was very important to us that we maintained just like you said, it, it feels like an elite, but it's light and it's carbon. Yeah. Yeah, that that was pretty impressive. And then uh, to the performance, um, folks who will see our video review of the bow, we, you know, I think there's an 11 foot per second difference between the Omnia and the Era. And so we shot the same arrow. Uh, it's 475 grains, I think, from the Omnia and from the Era. And it was exactly same specs, exactly 11 feet per second difference. I think we got 291, Kyle, 291 feet per second with our arrow. But what was impressive to me was seven and a quarter inch brace height. Yeah. That's fast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it is a, a big forgiving brace height, um, seven and a quarter, uh, but we're still getting 336 feet per second. Yeah. Um, so it, it's kind of a, a great combination of performance and comfort. Um, and really the difference in speed between the Omnia and the Era is all coming from the difference in brake site. Sure. Um, so, yeah, we were, you know, the, 
this project of developing this riser, like I alluded to, it, it's taken a few years to get to where we are today. Um, so there's been multiple iterations throughout that. And I would imagine, yeah. Really, we got to the point developing the Omnia with the new SP CAM system. And with all the performance benefits and gains we got from that CAM system, we knew we had to include it on the on the carbon bow as well. Because originally gotcha. when we started the carbon bow development, the SP CAM wasn't around. Um, right. So we you know, we made some adjustments and some tweaks to the carbon bow to make sure we could get this new cam to perform on it. And really it, it's worked out incredible, um, you know, from the, the forgiveness uh, of a bow like this um, and the performance that we're getting out of it. Yeah. So is that, so going for, I mean, you guys have been making aluminum bows for several years. So then when you go into carbon for you and your engineering team, is that like a kind of going back to the drawing board, so to speak, going back to school to learn about carbon, or is it not that different for you guys? Um, there was quite a bit of learning uh, throughout the process and, and not only in, in designing the structure, but, uh, the geometry of the riser itself has a significant impact on the finish of the riser. Um, because of the way it's created and, and molded, um, if you get too intricate with features on the riser, they sometimes don't mold consistently and you'll have um, you know, a, a finish that we weren't happy with. So right. we went through multiple iterations you know, beyond the strength and testing that, just trying to get the finish where we wanted it, where we were happy with it to be an elite product. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I noticed that you were, you do have the two bridges, top and bottom, which is, uh, that's something that's very elite, but it's also something that I hadn't seen in carbon before. Yeah. But I'm guessing that's part of why it feels the way it does. Yeah, yeah, it definitely adds quite a bit of rigidity to the riser. Uh, above and below the grip. Um, but it also adds some of that kind of what I was alluding to as far as complexity in the molding process yeah. and, um, you know, getting the finish where we needed it to be. Yeah. So when this, so when the final version came out, is it like, did it do what you expected or were you like, man, this thing's doing even better than I had thought it would. <laughs> it's definitely doing better than what we, what we expected. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah the, there's been a huge demand for it. You know, our sales team has been uh, pre-selling this, you know, into the market to get placement and the response has been pretty incredible um, to the, to the point that we're adjusting our forecast and adjusting our, um, our production output so that we can, we can try to stay ahead of it. Nice. Yeah. You're going to keep Tommy Gomez busy there in the plant, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, the Omnia has been doing incredible as well. So uh, it's, it, you know, we, we've got multiple bows that we're going to be trying to stay on top of the lead time. Yeah. Uh, from, from you guys, uh, from your customers that you're hearing, who are the main people who want that carbon bow? You know, I, I don't know that you can necessarily classify them into uh, – a, a certain category. I, I think we will bring some new people to carbon um, that are maybe an elite fan. Yeah. Um, our carbon bow is also a little bit more affordable than some of the other carbon bows on the market. Yes. Uh, so, you know, with the, with the price of aluminum bows that continues to go up, there's not as much of a gap between our carbon bow and, and maybe someone else's aluminum bow now. Right. So, um, but people that, that are interested in carbon, you know, weight is obviously one of the features of carbon. We wanted this to be um, really comfortable to shoot uh, and stable, but light. Uh, yeah. So we're, our, you compare the Era and the Omnia, the Era is about a half a pound lighter than the Omnia, which was important for us. Uh, right. You know, to us, one of the selling features of a carbon bow is that it's lightweight. Um, so that was important. So people looking for a lightweight bow, um, you know, it, it may sound silly to some, but the warm to the touch, uh, 
feel of a carbon bow is important to people. Yes, uh, it is. <laughs> so, and you know, it's getting pretty cold this time of year and, yep. you know, sitting out in the tree and it's really uh, interesting kind of the perceptions of carbon carbon is it's not like there's a heat source in carbon. It's not heated. Right. Um, but the warmth from your hand transfers into it so quickly that it feels warm to the touch. Yeah. Um, whereas an aluminum bow, um, you know, holds that cold temperature and in it, in it quite a bit longer. So, uh, that's, a, that's another one. And then people just kind of looking for the newest technology, something, something different and, and yeah. premium. Um, that, that want to have a carbon bow. That, uh, that warm to the touch. Yeah, it is. You, I don't know how many bow hunters everywhere have been in the situation, especially in the late season deer starts coming in, you take your glove off and hold that aluminum. And now you got to stand there for like 10 minutes, man, that thing gets cold fast. <laughs> Yeah. Whereas yeah. the carbon, I, I went to the Arctic uh, muskox hunting years ago and I had a carbon bow and it was like night and day for it being that cold. It did feel like almost like there was like a hand warmer in it because it was so warm. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that that the difference for anybody who hasn't tried that boy, just try bow hunting on a January day in the in the northeast and you'll <laughs> you'll know the difference. Yeah, you have to peel your hand off the riser. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so in keeping with all the things that make this boat elite, you were also able to incorporate set technology in. I imagine yeah. that probably had some challenges. Yeah, for sure. It it was also one of the had-to-have features when we set out to do a carbon bow. Um, right. And, but the way we were doing set technology before wasn't really conducive to – how you build a carbon bow. So we, we did have to make some changes, um, but that was a critical feature. So there's some special things that we did in the construction of the carbon riser to allow for the features needed for set technology to work. Um, there's a internal aluminum piece within the carbon right. that um, allows for the thread engagement for the micro adjustable limb pocket. Yeah. Um, but that, yeah, set technology that that was it would have been a lot easier to make this riser without it. Um, right. But we knew we, we had to have. it. Yeah. I, yeah. I would imagine your customers would be looking for that. That's kind of what you come known for. And with this SP cam, I mean, of course, that has all the adjustability features, the quarter inch uh, draw length adjustments, the basically infinite um, uh, let off adjustment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. That that's yeah, all it, part of the cam. Yeah. And it, it covers a wide range of shooters. So on the era, you know, draw length ranges of 25 and a half to 31 inches in quarter inch increments. So that should cover, you know, 90% of, of people interested in a bow like this. Right. Right. And it is a compact uh, 31 and a quarter inch axle to axle. We talked about, you know, the brace height sum at seven and a quarter. Um, but really, uh, um, the bow feels longer and shoots, um, you know, with that big brace height, it's just so stable yeah. and, and then forgiving. It's, it's really an awesome bow to shoot. That's what struck me was because it's so fast. I knew it was that fast. You know, obviously when you get to a, a quote unquote speed bow, there's some sacrifices you have to make, but it just wasn't there with this one. With that big brace height, it was nice. Yeah. And the long axle, or the, excuse me, the string angle coming off those cams, it felt bigger than it was. And uh, let's talk about that for a second, because we always hear from folks, ah, you know, the longer bows, that's what people want. But we're here in the East, and I, I don't, I'm not sure if people are aware of that, but the Eastern tree stand bow hunters, they don't like those long bows. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, there's something for everybody, but they like yeah, their short bows. Yeah. There, there's definitely different camps on that um, axle to axle spec and one's not necessarily right or wrong. Um, yeah. But I think this fits, fits really well. You know, it is a compact bow at 31 and a quarter, but for someone who likes the feel of a little bit longer bow, the way this is right. designed, you know, the limbs do not flex together as far as other bows do. So your axle to axle at full draw, which is really what right. what's important, um, 
and this with the size of the cams, it, it, it feels much longer. Right. Right. Um, and you know, for those, you know, this will come with our performance mods installed, but we also have a set of smooth mods and a set of 75% let off mods available for those that want, um, an even smoother draw cycle, um, yeah. or a little bit more holding weight. Gotcha. Well, all right, Josh Sidebottom, COO, TOG, we certainly appreciate your time. And I can tell you, man, we are excited to see folks get their hands on the era, as I'm sure you are as well. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, PJ. Appreciate all that you guys do. Excellent.